I have an extension cord and I broke the ground off of it. So I went ahead and just trimmed it off. I need to replace this because some appliances require ground and if I'm plugging this into the wall and the ground is missing, then over here we don't really have a ground. But when I'm working on this side of the cord, I don't necessarily know that this is missing because it's plugged into the wall and it all hides. So it's best to just get rid of this and we can go ahead and install one of these plugs that you pick up at the hardware store. This is a commercial grade one. I decided to get the tougher ones rather than the, the cheap flimsy plastic ones. And we'll go ahead and attach this. And I got the one with the ground obviously because well, we have a ground over here and it'll plug together like that. The first thing we need to do is open up the sheathing here. Now the sheathing holds the three insulated wires. And to cut that open, I'm just gonna use a razor blade. I'm gonna gently insert it and peel it up. And that should open it. This is about an inch and a half to an inch worth of exposed cable here. I'll go ahead and make a little incision this way and just peel it around. And you can do a bit of ripping here. It's gonna be hidden inside the plug here. And here we have our three exposed wires, or three wires, they're insulated. We got our hot, neutral, and ground. So black is hot, white is neutral, green is ground. You wanna make sure you do this correctly. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you a way to check it with a multimeter to make sure you did it correctly, because if you do it incorrectly, a lot can go wrong as electricity is to be respected. The first thing we need to do is make sure we get this lower section on, because if we go ahead and install this without putting that on, we're gonna to have to take this off again. So I have that on, out of the way, out of mind. And here I have my three wires, and here I have this really simple, cheap wire stripper. These are made by, ooh, I don't know, it's made in Taiwan. And I'm just gonna go ahead and insert the wires and cut off just a very small quarter inch. And I believe these wires are about 16 gauge. So I'll go ahead and put it in a 16 gauge spot, rotate it around and pop it off. And there we have the exposed wires for the neutral. I'll go ahead and repeat that with the green as ground or the ground is green. Go ahead and lock it down, spin it around and pop it off. So you want enough wire that you can get it into these little clamps, but not too much wire that the wire is kind of protruding out of these clamps. Just make sure they're all uniform. If you get it wrong, you just go back and strip a little bit more off. There we go. So when we're attaching to the receptor, we need to make sure we get the hot on the hot spot, the neutral on the neutral spot, and the ground on the ground spot. The way you could, this is the uniform way, is that hot black goes to brass. So this one is the brass screw. So it's going to connect there. So I'll go ahead and just loosen this up. And this little silver part moves. I'm just gonna stick that in there. And then I'm just going to screw down on it. Okay. Next, the silver goes to white neutral. Go ahead and it's actually already open. So I'll go ahead and get that in there. Now that it's in there, I can close down on it. Now, if you want to get really fancy, you can loop these around the bolts inside the little clamping zone. However, that's not necessary. This is quite a lot of pressure there. 
And most of the pulling force will be transferred to this guy over here, as that's gonna clamp down on the cable to keep from accidentally pulling on these over here. But if you yank on the cable a lot, the force will eventually transfer to inside the receptor or the plug and onto these points. And well, no amount of wrapping it around that will seriously help it. Okay. So now the green is ground. It's gonna go to the green bolt or, or screw. This one's a little harder to do because gravity is fighting against me, but I'll get it in there. And once again, the insulation for the wire does not enter into the clamping area. It goes right up next to it because you don't want to clamp the insulation. Otherwise, you're going to keep from getting a really good contact on the wire to um, the plug. I've got all of those attached. Now I just need to line up the three grounding screws, not like electrical grounding, but three connecting screws to bring the two halves of the plug together. And then I can drive them in. This is a nice steel case, really heavy duty one. They sell these plastic ones and sure they're cheap, but I think you're just gonna end up paying in the long run for another broken cable. Okay. Right there. And yeah, these screws go in really fast. This one they're like cutting into plastic there. And then lastly is to make sure we clamp down on the leads here. and do it evenly on the two different screws. So that way things aren't cattywampus here. Nice and tight. We got this rubber gasket here that'll protect the wire from this metal cutting into it. And give it a little something of a cushion to spread that pressure around evenly. Yeah, just a, two screws on each, turn turns on each screw until you feel like that's crimping down. And that's good. And so here we have our two ends come together. And that's how we're gonna help check this out is we're gonna set, we're gonna use this multimeter. This is a really cheap multimeter. You can get some at Harbor Freight for like a, five bucks. And I'm gonna just send it on this uh, arrow plus sign, which is a continuity. Oh, whoops, turn that around. It's facing the wrong way. So continuity, I got a one here. And when these two uh, leads connect, we, we should get a zero, which means there's continuity, means there's a connection there. And the first thing I'm gonna do is stick it into one side. I'm gonna go ahead and stick it on that side. And then over here, I just want to make sure that these line up correctly visually. So if I'm in this first big hole here, then I'm going to need to check this left side of the plug this way. And boom. So we know that the wire is actually creating a closed circuit when I do that inside here. And we could do that with each of them. And it doesn't matter, I could stick the black one in this side and use the red on this side. It makes no difference. Okay, so our two ground and, or er, hot and neutral are working quite well. And the ground is a little more difficult to do because it doesn't really wedge in there. So I'm gonna have to find a nice contact, hold it with one hand and then touch this with the other hand. And there we go, we got good continuity for our ground. And we have successfully repaired this extension cord so it can be put back into use. And if you go to the hardware store, you could also exchange the female side. And this will be good to do if I go ahead and replace this side over here. Then I have 
a good understanding that these two go together because they have the similar ends. Um, this might be a little confusing for somebody that's not me to know that this orange extension cord goes to this metal one if there's a lot of extension cords in the area. I hope this was helpful. I hope you found it useful. Go ahead and click that like. Make sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date with the newest DIY from me. All right, bye.